Did you know you've got to be one of the elderly to run for President of the United States? What do you mean that's not true? Why do they all look like they're one birthday away from becoming a Crypt Keeper? Welcome to A Brief History of the Past. I'm Caitlin Burroughs and today we're exploring the history of the Presidents of the United States. Hang on, this is going to be another one of them four-parter episodes like when we did the history of the monarchy. One long video? Well, I don't want to. How many Presidents are there anyway? 45? I thought it was like 17, tops. The 13 American colonies declared their independence from Britain on July 4th, 1776. That was a long time coming before that. The colonies had already been at war with Great Britain for over a year due to increased taxation from the Crown. I mean, it makes sense when you think about it, really. It ain't easy to make a living on land you've stolen from the indigenous population while at the same time having to worry about taxation without representation, am I right? As per usual with these sorts of history videos, we'll give a brief breakdown of each president, starting with the first one, George... John Hansen. John Hansen. Who's John Hansen? As everyone here is in the same boat, there's no harm in my revealing some details, and my instructions are to do so. Before the Constitution was drafted, America had the Articles of Confederation. Under these, eight men were appointed to serve one-year terms, with John Hansen becoming the first President of the United States in Congress assembled under the Articles of Confederation. That's a mouthful, isn't it? The position held by Hansen from November 5th, 1781 to November 3rd, 1782 was a ceremonial one that had far less power than the presidency under the Constitution. Hansen didn't actually care for the position, but the Articles hadn't taken succession into account, so he finished his term. Hansen introduced the Treasury Department, the first Secretary of War, the first Foreign Affairs Department, and established Thanksgiving on the fourth Thursday in November. That's an awful lot for someone who doesn't even feature into the cliff notes of the country. Couldn't they have, I don't know, put him on some legal tender or something? Maybe a halfpenny or, I don't know, stuck his face on a turkey around the holidays. <laughs> the first president of the United States under the Constitution was George Washington, serving two terms from 1789 to 1797. Washington had a distinguished military career beforehand, fighting in the French and Indian War, and serving as commander-in-chief in the Continental Army during the Revolutionary War. Now, as president, he had no political affiliations and actually opposed the formation of parties, thinking that it would create conflict that could undermine the Republic. <laughs> Please. Like people would ever get so petty that they let their political affiliations negatively impact their government. <laughs> Gentleman's out of order. Wait. Like, didn't Washington cut down one of his dad's cherry trees and then when confronted about it, he told the truth? What? It was a lie made up by Mason Locke Weems to help sell his biography books about the former president. That's what you call ironic. The second president was John Adams, who served from 1797 to 1801. Adams was the first and only president elected under the Federalist Party, which was America's first political party made prominent by Alexander Hamilton. During his term, he was the first president to take up residence in the executive mansion that would become known as the White House. Oh, I see how it is. Washington is over here like, oh no, don't pay me for my services, I'm a public servant. But John Adams is like, hey, you mind if I crash on the executive couch? I always knew Adams was a bum. Damn you, Adams! The third president was Thomas Jefferson, who served two terms from 1801 to 1809. Jefferson, along with James Madison, created the Democratic-Republican Party to oppose Hamilton's Federalist Party. Now, during Jefferson's terms, he organized the Louisiana Purchase, which I think we all know is Spanish for Louise and Anna, Louise E. Anna, right? So clearly, he's making a deal with these two ladies. And so, what? Which means that's not right. Mr. To Red Dwarf, we have an odd mixed a complete smeg pot. <laughs> Brains in the anal region. Apparently, the Louisiana Purchase was a real estate deal that would double the nation's land area. And Jefferson signed an act 
prohibiting importation of slaves, though Jefferson himself will continue to own and trade slaves that worked on his plantations, and thus the modern political practice of do as I say, not as I do was born. You shut your mouth when you're talking to me. James Madison was the fourth president, serving from 1809 to 1817. During his two terms, Madison spearheaded the War of 1812, in which America thought it could easily capture Canada and use it as a bargaining chip in all its disputes with Britain. I assume, with the name of the war, that Madison had it buttoned up that same year, yeah? What? It was dragged on for three years? I mean, I suppose the War of 1812 sounds better than the War of Hubris. So what's it to you? James Monroe would serve as the fifth president from 1817 to 1825. Monroe signed the Missouri Compromise into legislation, and let me tell you, what a compromise. Have you ever been to Missouri? Nightmare. What? The legislation added Maine and Missouri to the Union, as a free state and slave state respectively, while also prohibiting slavery above the 36th parallel with the exception of Missouri. Oh. Wait, how's that supposed to change my mind about Missouri again? John Quincy Adams was the sixth president, serving from 1825 to 1829. Interestingly enough, Adams ran against Andrew Jackson, William Crawford, and Henry Clay in the 1824 election, none of which won the majority in the electoral vote, and the winner had to be selected by the House of Representatives. So, one might say he was the president no one wanted. Disgrace, shame. Andrew Jackson was the seventh president from 1829 to 1837. He gained fame as a general in the United States Army, becoming a national hero for his victory at the Battle of New Orleans in 1815. But, as president, he also signed the Indian Removal Act into effect in 1830, which forcibly relocated most Native American tribes, causing widespread death and disease. And they put him on the 20? Who was in charge of that decision? Probably Jackson himself, I imagine. Martin Van Buren served as the 8th president from 1837 to 1841, and was most known for his time on The Muppet Show performing opposite Statler. What? What do you mean that's not him? You shaved that moustache off Waldorf and you've got Van Buren, I'm telling you. This show should be reported to the Consumer Protection Agency. Van Buren is known for being the first president to have English as his second language, as his mum was Dutch. He was also an advisor under Jackson's two terms and helped create the organizational structure for the Democratic Party. Huh. And here I thought the Dutch just wore wooden shoes and got high all the time. I would like to apologize uh, to, to the Dutch people. It has come to my attention that I may have shed some things that were a bit insensitive to you. Um, and look, I get it, you know. Uh, you don't just wear wooden shoes, you know. But you also dance in them. It's actually pretty impressive when you think about it. So, I would like to apologise again uh, for my previous comments, which were also insensitive. So, to the people of Dutchland, to any of the Dutch that may be watching this video, look, I've said some things that I regret, you know, I've said some things that you probably regret, and, you know, you're more than just your stereotypes. So, from the bottom of my heart, I apologise. Do we get it? Do we get, do we get that one? Oh, thank goodness, because I also forgot they don't like to share bills at mealtimes. William Henry Harrison was the ninth president, serving in 1841. Harrison was the first member of the Whig Party to serve in office. The Whig Party? Oi, Bill! Hey, we're going to start our own political party, mate. You want in? I'll do, and I've got just a name for it. The Whig Party got its name from the English Anti-Monarchist Party and used it in an attempt to portray Andrew Jackson as King Andrew. You know, I'll take back what I said earlier. Politicians are an incredibly petty lot. And it is glorious! Unfortunately for the Whigs, Harrison died just 31 days into his term from pneumonia-like symptoms. He would be succeeded by his vice president, John Tyler, who served from 1841 to 1845. Before Harrison, no president had died in office, and it created some issues for Tyler. It was unclear if the vice president became president, or was still just the vice president acting as president. The cabinet fought the latter, but Tyler was insistent on the former, and immediately had himself sworn into office, setting the precedent for future successions. Tyler would be the youngest president to that point, at 51 years old. 51! 
I told you only the elderly get to be president. James K. Polk was the 11th president. 11? We're only at 11? Have you no mercy? We do not train to be merciful here. Mercy is for the weak. Polk served from 1845 to 1849 and is most known for expanding the United States territory, including the annexation of the Republic of Texas, the Oregon Territory, and what is modern-day California, Utah, Nevada, Arizona, parts of Colorado, New Mexico, and Wyoming from his victory during the Mexican-American War. What's the K in James K. Polk stand for? <laughs> Conqueror? <laughs> what? Well, of course I know Conqueror isn't spelled with a K. I'm not a moron. Everyone knows you spell it with a Q. Zachary Taylor, or your grandfather who just woke up angry from a nap, was the 12th president, serving only 16 months, dying from a stomach disease on July 9th, 1850. Taylor had become a national hero from victories during the Mexican-American War, and became the first president to be elected without serving in a previous political office. Oh, wait a set an irresponsible example, Zach. I am officially running for president of the United States. Millard Fillmore. M Millard? Millard. Is it French? Mia? Mia Mi Fillmore? No? It's just Millard. All right, well, Millard Fillmore was Taylor's VP and would succeed him serving from 1850 to 1853. Fillmore would be the last Whig to hold the presidency and was instrumental in the passing of the Compromise of 1850. Tell you what, I'd like to pass the Compromise of 2020 where we stop and take this up again in a new video! The Compromise of 1850 was a package of five bills passed by Congress that diffused a political confrontation between free states and slave states that had been brewing since the acquisition of territories from the Mexican-American War. The Compromise also created the Fugitive Slave Act, but also banned the slave trade in Washington, D.C. I mean, I guess getting something negative in the Fugitive Slave Act in exchange for something positive, like the banning of the slave trade in D.C., is the epitome of the word compromise, but I don't know. I just feel like we should have called it that we're not all dicks, just some of us are dicks of 1850. Generally, I like it. Franklin Pierce was the 14th president, serving from 1853 to 1857. Well, well he looks like a young whippersnapper. How old was he as president? 32? 35? 49? Must be a yearbook picture then. Pierce saw the anti-slavery movement as a threat to the unity of the nation, and so he alienated anti-slavery groups by enforcing the Fugitive Slave Act and signing the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which effectively repealed the Missouri Compromise. Pierce's actions would set the stage for the Civil War. Yeah, he would fall into that some of us are dicks category. Logical. James Buchanan was the 15th president, serving from 1857 to 1861. What can I say about James Buchanan that ain't already been said? Moving on. What? I'm tired of talking about presidents. I mean, what's there to say about him anyway? That he influenced the Supreme Court's decision in the Dred Scott case, which denied a slave's petition for freedom, thus rendering the Missouri Compromise unconstitutional, or that he tried admitting Kansas into the Union as a slave state, or that southern states started seceding from the Union just weeks after he lost the 1860 election to Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. What? What do you mean he wasn't a vampire hunter? Looks like we're going to pick up with Abraham Lincoln next time, because apparently I'm no longer making sense. I'm just saying. If he wasn't a vampire hunter, how do you explain the lack of vampires now? Vampires don't exist. Yeah, because he killed them all. You're welcome. Let me know what sort of history topics you'd like to see me discuss in future videos, and let me know your thoughts on the first 15 presidents in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you all in the future. The Whig Party got its name from... Whew, what, my Marco Rubio all of a sudden? Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and a share. 
Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified when more Brief History of the Past videos go up. And check out some of the other videos we have on the channel. You might find something else that you like.